Welcome back. We're on part 38 of your journey to becoming an extra licensed ham radio operator. And we're in sub element 8 alpha. We're not out of the weeds yet. This is more electronics and math. What technique shows that a square wave is made up of a sine wave and its odd harmonics? And that is the Fourier analysis. And I have here a picture from Wolfram that shows the square wave and then it shows all of the odd numbers of waveforms that it takes to add together to get that square wave. Notice the fundamental frequency of this is right here and so the Fourier transform will take all of those and tell you what they are but this is where your spurious emissions come from when you use square waves as as a um, modulator Fourier analysis it's big math which of the following is a type of analog to digital conversion and that is successive approximation and this is all in a chip so the way it works is it has a register and when it hits the next section it creates a binary output based on that uh, waveform so you need to remember successive approximation so think of approximation uh, most ADCs analog to digital, digital conversions are not mirror imaged their approximations. Which of the following des describes a signal in the time domain? That is amplitude at different times. Now I have, if you will go to Wikipedia, I, I, I don't normally say just go to any place. I use Google as a loose term for look it up on the internet, but they have the Fourier transform which transforms it from the frequency domain to a time domain and they show you how how it works so you can see that it's showing you over here there's a lot of this frequency and then as the frequencies go on their um, amplitude drops in that domain so that's a pretty neat image right there I uh, really like it but Signal in the time domain is amplitude at different times. What is dither with respect to analog to digital converters? It is a small amount of noise added to the input signal to reduce quantization noise. So they put a little bit of noise on the input, they dither it, and that helps with um, the, the quantization noise. Just remember that dither is to it's noise to reduce noise in that wild. What is the benefit of making voltage measurements with a true RMS or true root mean square calculating meter? I don't know where this fits in here, but RMS is measured for both sinusoidal and non sinusoidal signals, so such as a square wave. Uh, RMS is a root mean square. Root mean square means the voltage that, let's talk about home voltage in the United States, which is where this test is given. We call it 110 or 120 volts AC. That is the RMS voltage. It actually has a peak voltage of somewhere between 130 to 150 volts. So that root mean square calculator is going to give you the average of 120 volts. It is the average. Um, we could get into the math of how it does that, but we're not going to worry about that. Okay, what is the approximate ratio of peak envelope power to average power in an unprocessed single sideband phone signal? Approximately 2.5 to 1. And that all depends on your character of how you speak. It, everybody's is going to be different. But the PEP is the peak, and then your average is just the average over the whole time. It comes out to 2.5 to 1. That's just something you need to memorize there. 
What determines the peak envelope power to average power ratio of an unprocessed single sideband phone signal? And those are your individual speech characteristics. Speech characteristics. So that, that's to every operator. It, it, everybody's going to be slightly different than that 2.5. Why are direct or flash conversion analog to digital converters used for a software defined radio? Well, they're very high speed, and a very high speed allows digitizing high frequencies. And that all goes back to the uh, lookup tables that we, we, we looked at earlier. You know, they, they can do it really fast. So that is your answer. Very high speed allows digitizing high frequencies. Question number nine, this is a binary question. How many different input levels can be encoded by an analog to digital converter with 8-bit resolution? So digital only has two states. So those two states, if you have an 8-bit resolution, it's 2 to the 8th power. That gives you 256 different answers, uh, different levels. What is the purpose of a low pass filter used at the output of a digital to analog converter? Remember, digital to analog is not a mirror image. So there's going to be some square waviness to it, and that is going to remove the spurious sampling artifacts from the output signal. So when you have that low pass filter, that is helping to recreate the final sine wave. It's going to remove all of that spurious sampling artifacts. And the last question, which of the following is a measure of the quality of an analog to digital converter? And that is the THD, total harmonic distortion. If you look up solid state amplifiers for headphones or whatever, you're going to see a, a rating of THD at a certain gain or a certain level at, or a certain frequency. So the total harmonic distortion is what you use to measure the quality of an ADC. I'm Robbie, W1RCP73, or 72 if you want to do more with less.